Hello, and thanks for using TickBoom, a free service that helps high school students with the math problems. In this video, I'll be answering this question here, which tells us to let two complex numbers be z1 equals 2 cos pi on 12 plus i sine pi on 12, and z2 equals 2i. Part 1 says to, on an argand diagram, sketch the vectors OA and OB, representing z1 and z2 respectively. Part 2 said to draw vectors representing z1 plus z2 and z1 minus z2 on the same argand diagram. And then part 3 says what is the exact value of arg z1 minus z2. So I'll give this a go. If you find my explanation helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And if you're someone who wants to keep their finger on the pulse with the kinds of questions that other students are struggling with, be sure to subscribe to my channel so you can stay in the loop. So what I've done here is I've drawn up an argand diagram because that's going to be the core of what we do in this question. Uh, we're told, we're, we're given uh, our two vectors, or our two complex numbers, z1 equals 2 cos pi on 12 plus i sine pi on 12, and then z2 is equal to 2i. So the first part of the question asked us to plot these. So for Z1, we need to know the real and imaginary component. So I might just plug these into the calculator so I can plot them accurately. So we'll have 2 times cos 180 divided by 12. So that's about 1.9, so about here. And then um, 2 times sine 180 divided by 12. That's about 0.51, so that's going to be about there, say. So we'll call that point A, and uh, this vector from the origin to A, that is the vector that represents this complex number Z1. Now for Z2, that's a lot simpler. We've got no real part, and the imaginary part is 2, so we can plot that here. So that's point B, and from the origin up to that point B, that vector is the vector Z2. So that's part 1 of the question done. Part 2 now asks us to plot Z1 plus Z2 and Z1 minus Z2. Now because Z2 is just this imaginary part, it's really just shifting from A up and down two units. So we kind of take this vector and we slide over and the point here, so I'll call that our point C. We've got A, B, so I'll call this point C. From the origin to point C, that vector is z1 plus z2. And similarly, we can take the magnitude of this vector z2, and instead of coming up, we can come down, in other words, do the opposite direction, and that's in effect negative z2. So we'll, where we end up, this point here, which I'll call point D, the origin to that point, is z1 minus z2. So that's part two of the question done. That's plotting um, those two vectors, z1 plus z2, z1 minus z2, in the same argand diagram. Part three now wants us to find the argument of z1 minus z2. And that is essentially the angle that this vector makes with the real axis. So because we're in this quadrant here, we're kind of coming this way. So we're really concerned with this angle here, which I'll call theta. Now, the way we can find this angle, I think the simplest way is to make use of essentially this triangle that is formed between points O, A, and D. Maybe what I'll do is I'll draw up a clean version over here, just so that we can annotate onto it. This uh, isn't really necessarily to scale, but um, 
basically we've got uh, our triangle O, A and D. Uh, we know that the magnitude from O to A is 2 because that's the modulus of that complex number. We had it in mod arg form. Uh, we also know the magnitude from A to D is 2 because um, uh, that's the magnitude of this complex number Z2. So uh, it's actually an isosceles triangle. And uh, if I just annotate on this horizontal line, we know this angle here is pi on 12. That's the um, argument of Z1. And we've called this angle theta. Um, maybe I'll call this angle alpha. And we know that this angle here, because it's an isosceles triangle, this angle will also be the same as this total angle. So pi on 12 plus theta. So now if we can find alpha, we'll then have everything we need to find theta, which then gives us the magnitude of our argument. And then we just put a negative because we're coming in this direction. So um, if I want to find alpha, I can use these three angles, um, this right angle triangle here to find alpha. So we know that um, alpha plus pi on 12 plus 90 degrees, which is pi on 2, that's all going to add up to 180 degrees pi. So um, therefore alpha plus um, pi on 12 plus 6 pi on 12 will equal pi. So if I just isolate alpha, alpha will equal, I'll call this 12 pi on 12 minus 1 plus 6 is 7 pi on 12. So alpha will equal 12 minus 7 is 5 pi on 12. Okay, so now that we have alpha, I can say that um, alpha plus theta plus pi on 12 plus theta plus pi on 12, all of that will add up to pi. So alpha we just found was 5 pi on 12 plus 2 thetas plus 2 of these. So plus 2 pi on 12 equals pi. So that means 2 theta plus 7 pi on 12 equals, I'll call this 12 pi on 12. So 2 theta will equal 12 minus 7 is 5 pi on 12. Um, so theta will equal 5 pi on 24. So that's the exact magnitude of theta. We were asked to find the exact um, value of this argument. Um, but we, we also need to note the direction because we're coming in this uh, clockwise direction. So um, normally when reading arguments, we kind of go anti-clockwise. That would be a positive argument. So if we're going in the other direction, it'll be negative. So therefore we can say that the argument of Z1 minus Z2 is equal to negative 5 pi on 24. And that's the way to do that question. So I think, um, you know, the first parts plotting it all up on the R game plane were, were straightforward enough. I think the key to the final part was um, observing this triangle and annotating onto it everything we knew to then eventually kind of plug the gaps and, and solve for this theta, this argument. So hopefully that all made sense and that you're able to follow along. And uh, tick boom.